Hello and welcome to this brand new 52 week long series to help you become more confident and fluent in English. I am so excited to be weaving English learning with mindfulness practices in this channel that I've decided to focus for 52 weeks on this book, Your True Home, The Everyday Wisdom of Thich Nhat Hanh. This book actually has 365 texts, one for each day of the year, but we're going to focus only on the first 52 so that we can look at each one more deeply and focus on all aspects of English, but most importantly, for you to bring your powers of understanding and insight to your English as you engage with me and with others here in this very channel using the comment section below. Are you ready for week one? Let's get started. If you haven't done so yet, subscribe to the channel and invite the bell to be notified every time I upload a new video to help you bring more awareness and depth to your English language learning and use. And if you're new here, my name is Tanya Meyer and I'm an English as a foreign language teacher to adults specializing in mindfulness practices to help bring joy, clarity and understanding to your English acquisition and use. Mindfulness is the practice of stopping and looking more deeply, which is instrumental in bringing clarity to everything we do. And it is from here, from a place of calm and spaciousness, that we can really make true progress with our English learning and with our confidence and fluency as we engage and interact in English. We're starting this brand new 52 week series at the beginning of a year, but you don't need to wait for a new year to begin to enjoy the content. Just watch any of the videos at any time. We're looking at the first 52 paragraphs in this book for the sake of consistency because you know that if we really want to master whatever it is, then we need to be consistent in our efforts. So you don't need a lot, you just need a little frequently. A little frequently is going to go a much longer way than a lot every once in a while. So each of these texts is taken from one of the many works of Thich Nhat Hanh and they are not only inspirational but transformational. Now Thich Nhat Hanh, who is known to his followers and disciples as Thai, uses very simple language to communicate profound teachings. And so let that be our first lesson that we do not need great complexity to express ourselves clearly. In fact, many times the opposite is true. But still, in the case where we need some clarification in terms of vocabulary, then we'll look at that first, and then we'll jump straight into the text itself, and we'll read it together twice, and then I'll share my reflections and experience and I'll invite you to do the same. By using English in this way to share our reflections and experience, we'll be making many connections in our mind and in our body that help us to see more clearly. When we see more clearly, our steps are more confident. So here we go. For this first text, I don't think there are any vocabulary issues, but let me know in the comments below if there are. So let's dive straight in. I suggest you try and read along with me out loud so that you can wrap your mind and your tongue around the sounds of English. Number one, your true home. Your true home is in the here and the now. It is not limited by time, space, 
nationality, or race. Your true home is not an abstract idea. It is something you can touch and live in every moment. With mindfulness and concentration, the energies of the Buddha, you can find your true home in the full relaxation of your mind and body in the present moment. Okay, so now let's read it again, because practice makes perfect. Your true home is in the here and the now. It is not limited by time, space, nationality, or race. Your true home is not an abstract idea. It is something you can touch and live in every moment. With mindfulness and concentration, the energies of the Buddha, you can find your true home in the full relaxation of your mind and body in the present moment. What is your understanding of this week's text? Practice your writing skills and write something in the comments below. Okay, so I've made a few notes and here are my reflections. Let's talk about the here and the now and the present moment first. Now, you know, we hear this a lot, the here and the now and the present moment, and it's kind of become something that doesn't really mean anything. I mean, what does it really mean? In order to understand what it means, we need to experience it. it the here and the now are not words that we say, the present moment. You know, I can say the present moment. Lots of people, we can all say it, but in order to truly understand the present moment, we need to experience it. And we need to experience it often because every time we experience the present moment, we can experience it more deeply. So then there's this part about the full relaxation of your mind and body in the present moment. When we are experiencing the present moment, our mind is relaxed and our body also. Even if we're doing something, usually we think about the present moment, you know, oh, mindfulness, sitting, uh, you know, people sitting in meditation, whatever image you might have of that. But we can experience the present moment deeply even while we are active when we're walking down the street, when we look up into the blue sky, when we brush our teeth, when we wash the dishes at home. These are all moments in which we can experience the here and the now very deeply. Because what usually happens during these moments is that our mind is busy thinking. Our mind doesn't think that looking up into the sky, brushing our teeth or doing the dishes is something important. And so it switches off and it goes into autopilot. And here is our body doing whatever it's doing while the mind is either switched off or thinking about something different. So when we talk about the full relaxation of mind and body, we are talking about mind and body being together because our body cannot be in the past and our body cannot be in the future. Our body can only be in the present moment. And so if our mind is with our body, then we know that we are fully in the present moment. Now, we think that a wandering mind, an untrained mind, a wild mind, the kind of mind that many of us have to just let it do whatever it does, to just think random thoughts or to dwell in the past or worry about the future, we think that those things bring us pleasure. But a trained mind brings us much deeper and immeasurable joy. And what is a trained mind? 
Well, it is the mind of someone, anyone, I mean, if I can do it, you can do it, who remembers to bring the mind back into the body regularly because our mind is conditioned to wonder, to be distracted, and to want to think about lots of things. And so it is a practice to calm the mind, to train the mind, to um, soften the mind. And this is why we need the energies of the Buddha. The Buddha, not the historical Siddhartha Gautama who lived 2,500 years ago, although he is the one whose teachings we, each one of us who have these energies within us also, he is the one who offered these teachings that we can apply and implement ourselves. And so these energies of the Buddha are very practical. Mindfulness and concentration are skills that we are all able to develop. For example, right now, are you able to take three mindful breaths? You know, this is something we can train ourselves to do. All of us can do this. And even these few seconds of bringing our attention to our in-breath and our out-breath creates a gap, a space, a pause in the ever-producing thinking mind. This space, this gap, this pause is what allows us to enter the present moment fully. And this is how we can bring great spaciousness to our life and therefore to our English. I'd like to recommend an app. It's free. It's called Remindful. And what you can do is to set it for a particular number of minutes. Right now I have it set for 30 minutes and so what it will do is it will ring every 30 minutes and when it rings I train myself to stop and to breathe in and out mindfully three times. Breathing in and out mindfully means that as I breathe in I know I'm breathing in and as I breathe out, I know I'm breathing out. I don't modify my in-breath and my out-breath in any way. If my in-breath is short, I let it be short. If my in-breath is long, I let it be long. If my out-breath is short, I let it be short. If my out-breath is long, I let it be long. I simply become an observer of this phenomenon which is happening every moment of our life, we are breathing in and breathing out. If we are not breathing in or out anymore, then we don't need to worry about anything. While we are here, we are breathing. And so we can anchor ourselves in this phenomenon that we almost never pay any attention to as a constant in our lives as a true friend, something that we can always depend on. We are always breathing. And so I want to encourage you to try this little practice for a week until the next video. Use your app to remind yourself to breathe in and out mindfully three times, regularly throughout the day and see if this 
small practice helps you relax and enjoy everything, including English, more deeply. And if making progress with English in this way is something that attracts you, if you've been trying to study English for a very long time and haven't really got to where you want to be, but feel that a different, more holistic approach might be helpful to you, then make sure you check out the links in the description box below about my program and how it might help you become more confident and fluent. Remember that you can also download a copy of your own guide. It's free, How to Revolutionize Your English in 8 Steps, full of tips and suggestions that you can start implementing straight away. And I'll see you in the next video for week two. Remember to invite the bell to be notified when I upload it. See you then. Bye for now.